Hi, in this video, I'll give you a quick overview of Dungeon Architect and how you can design your own theme. So Dungeon Architect is a procedural level generation tool. It lets you uh, also design the look and feel of your dungeons with an interactive uh, editor. So to start with, uh, let's open up Dungeon Architect and go to Prefabs and drop in the Dungeon Actor, the, sorry, the Dungeon Game Object. And uh, this game object is responsible for generating the layout and then assigning the theme of your dungeon. So uh, to start with, let me move this. Uh, to start with, I need to define a theme uh, uh, before I could build a dungeon. So the way this works is it works in two phases. First phase is that it builds the uh, it builds the layout of your dungeon, and in the next phase, it takes in the mapping that you have defined in your theme file. Uh, and then applies that mapping onto your scene. So that mapping tells you which mesh goes where. So you would define a mesh for your walls, you would define a mesh for, for the ground, for, for the doors, and so on. Then you're not just limited to meshes, it could be anything, lights or, uh, or different game objects, whatever. So uh, let's start by creating a simple theme. So you right click, create dungeon theme. And let's call this uh, all right. So this is the dungeon architect theme editor. Uh, it lets you uh, uh, it lets you create a mapping. So these are your markers. And you pull out nodes from here and you create game object nodes or uh, whatever and wherever a ground is expected in in your layout. So when Dungeon Architect creates the layout, it would create these markers everywhere. So wherever a ground is expected, it would create a ground marker and then it would come here and see what you have defined in this uh, in this marker. And whatever you define here would be play, taken and placed there. So uh, let me first select this and assign my uh, let me select the dungeon and assign this theme over here. So now that I've assigned it, I've created a link. And whenever I modify this, the theme you will also get updated. So let's go ahead and create some objects that we can use with our dungeon. So I'm going to create a basic cube. And let's create a prefab off of it. Okay, and let's go and delete this. We don't need it. All right. So this is my cube prefab object. Now I want to assign this cube wherever I I have a ground uh, ground marker. So I'm just going to drag this into the editor, and now I get a preview of how the object looks like. So since I want this in the ground, I'm just going to create a link, and you see that wherever a ground was expected after the layout was generated, it has created these ground markers. And since this is attached, it has spawned a, a ground mesh here. So now if I look at the dungeon configuration here, I, if I expand the grid, I see that the, the grid cell has a, has a configurable size option. So I have set the size to 4, 1, 4, right? And uh, so that's why it has created a cell of four, but my cube is just one by one by one. So I want to scale this cube up by uh, by one. So I'm going to select the cube, and I'm going to scale it by four. So you see, it has uh, it's fine. Let's say if I scale to three, there's still some gaps. I'm going to change this to four, and I'm also going to scale this to four. So so now we have our ground working, and. And let's bring this down by minus 0.5 since our pivot is uh, is in the middle. All right. So the way the algorithm works is it creates uh, it it starts with a bunch of cells and uh, it picks up the cells that are big enough and converts them into rooms and then rooms are interconnected either directly or indirectly and anything in between is a corridor. So you have rooms and you have corridors. 
rooms are surrounded by walls and uh, corridors are surrounded by fence. So you have wall markers, you have fence markers. You also have doors, stairs, and stuff. So whatever you attach to it would automatically come and be placed here. So let's add some walls to our, uh, let's again drag in our, so you see wherever we have a wall, we get this uh, object. Now we, we'd like to adjust the scale of this again, four. Let's make this four. Uh, let's raise this by two. Now, since the pivot of the uh, the mesh is not in the base of the base of this uh, cube, rather it's in the middle, so we need to raise this up a bit. Let's raise this by two, and let's change the scale to four. All right. So, and now the walls are a bit too thick, so let's uh, scale them down. Okay. Now let's create a fence in the same way. I'm gonna drag in. Now I'd like to have some kind of a railing here. Uh, uh, rather than a wall, I, I want a railing. So let me uh, raise this up by one, by two, by one, raise it up by one and scale this by four. All right, now it's too thick for a railing, so uh, let's scale this down. Okay, it's looking good. Now let's add some support structures. So you have a fence separator. A marker called fence separator is added in, in between the, I mean, uh, is added between the markers is added between the fence markers. So uh, if you insert something here, it will be placed in the middle. So I'm going to have again this. Or, you know, instead of this, I don't want this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Now this is creating a lot of clutter, right? Everything is outside of it. So uh, I want to make it clean. So let me destroy the dungeon. And uh, I'm going to create a new game object. Dungeon item. So I want everything that the dungeon architect creates inside of this, so it doesn't clutter my uh, mm -hmm. uh, my interface. So the uh, hierarchy. So I'm going to select this, go down to the pool scene scene provider, and set this as a parent. So whenever I build, everything is inside of this, so uh, it keeps it clean. All right now for the railing, I, I don't want a cube. I want a something like a cylinder. So let's create it. Uh, let me create a prefab with that. So this art that I'm dropping in would come in from uh, from your artist, or you can uh, you can buy stuff modular stuff from the asset store, and you can just place it here. So just for a demo purpose, I'm showing it with basic shapes here. So now if I place in the uh, fence separator, so you see we get a nice uh, uh, in the middle we get this this mesh inserted. Uh, now, obviously, it's too thick. Let's go ahead and reduce the size, uh, 0.5, and raise this up by 1, no, 0.5. All right. Uh, again, it's too thick, so 0.25. Okay, so this is looking good. Uh, now, this mapping that you have, ground to mesh, wall to mesh, uh, it's not one-to-one -one mapping. You can have one-to-many mapping. So if I want to attach something else apart from this, uh, I could do that as well. So let me create another type of mesh. Uh, I'm going to choose a sphere. And let's create a prefab. And let's go ahead and delete that. All right, so uh, I want this sphere as well to be, to be added on this. So uh, if I go ahead and add this, you see that nothing happens. Why? Because uh, there is an option here called consume unattached. So I've selected the first node in this hierarchy. And whenever this marker is encountered, it would start executing from left to right, all of the nodes. And if a node is inserted in the scene, which in this case, this is inserted, then it would check whether this flag is set. Consume unattached means that stop executing any further and consume this. Uh, so it would no longer execute the stuff that comes after this, right? And why was this inserted in the scene? The reason it was inserted was because the probability was set to one. 
So zero means zero percent chance of insertion, one means one percent chance, and if I change this to say 0.5, uh, then 50 percent of the time it inserts it. So we want it to be inserted all the time, so I'll change it to one, and I'm gonna uncheck this. Right? And if I do that, then the execution doesn't stop here, it goes to the next one as well. Uh, I'm gonna uncheck this as well. So I, I want to, let me adjust the scale, 0.5. All right, so we have a nice uh, dungeon working here. Uh, let me go ahead and adjust the minus point two five. So you get rid of that extra space you had on the sides. Uh, now I need to specify the the stairs as well. So if I have a stair mesh, I could use that. Uh, for now, I don't have a stair mesh, so let me create, try to create one. Uh, I'll just go ahead and so I can have it as a prefab, or, uh, you know, I think I'll just use the cube as a stair. But usually this would come as a, as a mesh from your artist. So, uh, see, wherever a stair is expected, it has inserted this here. So usually it'll be like a slope, uh, but since I don't have it, I'm improvising with this, so let's play with this a bit. Uh, scale this up to four. And rotate it on the X to 30. Sorry, zero. Hmm. And you have uh, you have stair two x for for stairs that are twice as high. So let's again do the same thing. Now there's another feature where uh, if you, you're not just limited to procedural uh, geometry, you can also paint on on your um, on the layout. So I have so if I expand the dungeon object, I have a paint mode, and the, m the moment I select it, it would create a yeah it would enter the paint mode, so I can paint in different heights. So I could extend my editor, I could extend the I can change the heights, for example. And uh, you can delete that as well by holding down shift. You also have a few prefabs to help you. Uh, if I go to Dungeon Architect prefabs, there is a platform volume that uh, would create a platform uh, on this position. So a platform could be either a corridor or a room. If it is a room, then it would interconnect this room with everything, uh, with uh, with other, with the rest of the geometry. If it is a corridor, then if it's near an existing geometry, it would attach to itself. So let me uh, change this to corridor, and then you need to assign the dungeon it belongs to. And we build. So you see it has created a corridor here if I move this close enough. See it nicely, seamlessly connects with the rest of the geometry. If I raise this up, it has created a, a stair as well. Now I'm gonna change this, I'm gonna scale this up a bit. Uh, now watch what happens as I change this to a room and rebuild. Uh, 
You see the rest of the geometry was uh, connected now. So rooms are rooms would be uh, connected with the rest of the dungeon. I can just move this around. Let me create a new one. Uh, I just press Control D to create a new platform, uh, and now I have another custom platform moving. Uh, you also have negation volume. If there's some procedural geometry you want to get rid of, uh, you could place a procedural. Uh, you could place a negation volume there, and it would remove the uh, remove the geometry there. Uh, you also have a theme override volume. So if you want to change the theme of your dungeon at specific uh, areas, you can do so. So this dungeon was generated based on the theme mapping that I have defined here. And this is a very basic, simple theme. Uh, you can have many different types of themes and uh, you can influence certain parts of your dungeons to have, uh, you can use this to influence certain part of your dungeons to have a different theme at that location. So for example, this part might be wood and this part might be stone or somewhere on the first floor would be uh, would be of marbles in the basement would be stones and so on. So uh, it's useful for adding variations in your level. So this is for now. For now, I'll be adding, I'll be creating more videos showing you some of the more advanced features in the next few videos.